So in my previous video, we talked about water shaders and how you can make them in Godot. And at the end of the video, we had something like this. Now it already looks okay, but I think we can make it better by adding some depth. Basically the deeper the water, the darker it should look. Now my first approach with this was to use vertex.z inside the fragment, which is the distance of the pixel to the camera. And so after playing around with it, I noticed that it wasn't gonna cut it. Since it gives us no useful information about what's behind the mesh. For that, we're going to have to use the depth texture. Here you can see I'm sampling from the depth texture with screen UV and assigning it to the albedo of the mesh. Now at first glance, you can see everything is red and there's not really any useful information for us. Well, actually there is, but because the values from the depth texture are non-linear, we can't really see the details quite well. One way to show this is to subtract the depth texture from one, basically inverting the colors. And now you can see the details are more noticeable when you're closer to the object and become less noticeable when you get further from the object. However, we usually need the red value of the depth texture. Now the method that I'm going to be using to get the depth is actually a slightly modified version of the proximity fade from the Godot standard material. Now this might not be the best method to get the water depth, but I think it's simple enough and has worked for me. Now to make the depth texture useful, we're gonna have to make it linear. And to do that, you would wanna multiply it by the inverse of the projection matrix. However, we can't really multiply a matrix by a float. I mean you could, but it's trying to make a new matrix with the multiplied value, which is not really what we want. Now you can only multiply a matrix 4 by a vector 4. And so to convert depth to a vector 4, we're gonna pass the screen UV as the first two arguments. Now the values you get from the screen UV are ranged from 0 to 1, and we have to convert them into the normalized device coordinates, which range from negative 1 to positive 1 which can be simply accomplished by multiplying the screen UV by 2 and then subtracting 1 from it. Now, we're not going to do that for the depth, since the Vulkan API uses 0 to 1 range for the z-axis, in contrast to the OpenGL API. And for the last argument, we're just going to pass 1. Now, since this is a projection matrix, you want to divide the XYZ components by the fourth component, which is the W. Now here, we're using the smooth step function to get our final depth blend value. So this is how smooth step works. If your value is less than edge 0, then the return value of smooth step will be 0. However, if the value is larger than edge 1, then the return value would be 1. Otherwise, it's going to interpolate between them. Here's a simple application I've made in Godot to demonstrate this. Now you can see as I change the value, the return of the smooth step will also change smoothly. So basically we're passing our world.z plus our offset as our edge 0 and edge 1 is just going to be world.z. And so our value is going to be vertex.z. And now you can see the parts that are closer to the mesh are white and the darker parts are further from the mesh. So now let's go ahead and create a uniform for the depth control and replace it with the offset we defined earlier in the smooth step. And now we have control over how far we can see under the mesh. Okay, so let's go ahead and define our water color and noise textures that we're going to be using for our normal map at the top of our shader. Now I'm going to calculate our new UVs for our normal maps and sample from our two normal maps using the mix function to interpolate between them. I also made two new variables for our roughness and normal control and also made a timescale control so we can change the timescale in the editor. Now back in Godot, in the shaders parameters, let's set our noise textures. Make sure as normal map and seamless is checked 
and that they don't have the same seat otherwise they're just going to be the same now in this tutorial I'm using a very simple way to make the depth color now this is not the best way out there but it has worked for me I'm basically going to multiply the watercolor by the depth blend okay so that doesn't look terrible but now let's try to make it transparent and to do that let's get access to the screen texture and sample from it and then use the sample value to multiply it with the depth blend which is then going to set the albedo okay so there's the transparency but the watercolor is gone now the way I handle the watercolor is by mixing it with the screen texture multiplied by the depth blend also I went ahead and created a new uniform to control the transparency of our water and now you can see we can decide how opaque we want the water to look now at the moment you can see the transition between the shallow water to deep water is very sharp and to make this transition smooth I'm going to use the Bear's Law you can adjust this uniform later in the editor to get what you're looking for okay so now that looks much better now with this next line of code we can make it even look stronger so now if you try to scale this mesh we're gonna see that the UV also scales up so wouldn't it be nice if we had a slider to control the UV scaling and so for that I'm going to create a new uniform to control the UV scale with it and now you can see we have control over the scale of the UV and how detailed the mesh is going to look but now if you scale the mesh you can see the UV also scales up and you have to scale the UV up manually whenever you scale up a mesh and to automate that process we're gonna use the world position instead of our UVs which can easily be accomplished by multiplying the model matrix by the vertex inside the vertex function and then passing out the result to the fragment shader using a varying and now no matter what I do with the mesh the scaling is always going to remain the same also you wouldn't have any tiling issues if you duplicate them now if you're coming from the previous video you might notice that there's no refraction in this code and that's because I had some issues with my refraction code from the previous video now there are some solutions in the comment section of that video but I decided that this video be just about the depth part of the water. So thanks for watching, I know that there's a lot to be desired about this shader code, for example we don't have edge foam and there's only a single watercolor. And the reason for that is I wanted this video to be as simple as possible, maybe like an introduction to depth texture. So yeah, if you're interested and new here please consider supporting me by subscribing to the channel and liking this video and as always thanks for watching and I'll see you soon